In this episode, I may come off sounding like I'm slamming this organization. The bike from this organization turned out it's pretty solid despite little quirky issues here and there or questionable things. But generally, the bike is very solid, which I'll do a full review the DC style in the near future. Until then, stay tuned and find out what I'm talking about. Roll the intro. Hello everyone, how are you? This is yours truly, Diabetic Cycling, coming at you once again. Welcome to those of you who subscribe and welcome those of you who see me for the first time. Do me solid and click that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so I can come see you more often. This is a channel brought to you by and sponsored by none other than my own damn wallet. I have no agenda. I don't sell anything. I don't even have an affiliate link. Uh, everything that I share with you here is me sharing with you my experiences and opinions that are transparent and unbiased as I have no ulterior mode. Purpose of this channel has been to basically provide you, the viewers, with a real life experience from average guy's point of view so that you could take that information and use for your own decision making process, whether that is uh, your, whether you're out there buying a bike, possibly something that I've talked about, so on and so forth. And as you would expect, my goal is to be transparent and unbiased and tell you like it is. So what I'm about to share with you in this episode, um, I am gonna take you through my journey and why I have come to a conclusion that is the title of this video with this particular organization. Some of you may feel that, hey DC, you are overreacting. Uh, some of you may agree with me and it doesn't matter which way you swing i'm just presenting it you take it for what it's worth at the face value and you make your own conclusion i'm okay if you feel that i am you know overreacting to this the events and i'm okay if not i'm just sharing with you so that you know going in uh, in advance if you were considering to buy something from this organization. That way you at least know going in. Same thing can happen to you. Basically, you form your own opinion based on the events. That's the goal. Now, if the organization, Ribble, there I said it, if a Ribble wants to rebut any of my statements that I am gonna show in this episode, uh, they have the same communication material that I'm showing you. Um, there were actually a couple chat histories that I don't have a screenshot of, so they could easily pull that up on their uh, messaging server. So there isn't anything that is dishonest in this video. Um, I, I'm presenting you as things happen. I'm going to uh, present you facts and nothing but the facts as well as just as when warranted, I'll sprinkle in my opinions and my thought process at the time why I thought what I did think. So enough of the uh, setup, let's get right to it. So the entire event started February 27th of last year. This is when I placed my order for Ribble Ultra SLR with Force uh, SRAM Force Access. Um, the order process was uh, rather simple and easy and it did disclose at the time, they did um, make it very clear, the bike would not ship until mid-November due to component shortage, which was not uncommon at that time and I was fine with it. On just waiting nine months, not that big of a problem. It's not like I don't have a, I didn't have a bike to ride or anything. So I uh, was fine with it, went with the order process, all good. Now, at the same time though, I would share with you, I did think that they were disclosing the worst possible case scenario, right? Because when you call a plumber in, and if the plumber tells you, I'll be there between eight and 12, 
you're not expecting the guy to show up at 11.55, all right? I mean, because he has an appointment between one and five as well. So um, I took it as, okay, so they're gonna cover their butt by saying mid-November and most likely it'll probably come sooner when they could get a hold of the components that are in shortage. So that was my thought and I was okay with that. And I, I was thinking, even if I have to wait until mid-November, that's no big deal, all good. We moved on. Now, set aside from this whole um, Rival Ultra situation, right around May of last year was when Ultegra Di2 12 speed, the new group said, was uh, becoming to be available, pretty readily available. So um, I paid attention to that and I wanted to dabble into the new 12 speed um, Di2 from Shimano. So I was looking into it and come June of, uh, what is it, June 5th of last year. So I did place an order for the whole built group set through Merlin. Uh, and then I received it and that ended up getting put on my Orbea Orca, which I'll link right here. I had an episode done about how I joined the dark side because I was a super anti Shimano up until then. Um, anyhow, so June of last year, I bought a full group set components and then um, unrelated again, August of last year, I also bought a second Shimano Ultegra Di2 12 speed group set, which I believe went to my Velo build. Anyhow, so um, again, I'm sharing this with you because the components were available at the time, and even in America, Jensen USA had the Ultegra bits available, so I could have ordered from here as well. So, components we're still a little bit short, but it wasn't out of a realm for us, even end user and customer to go ahead and buy, let alone the OEM builders like Ripple. All right, so basically a month had gone by with me riding around on my new Shimano uh, Ultegra Di2 12 speed on my Orbea and I quite taken liking to it. So I was thinking, okay, so Shimano bits are available defeating the component to shortage situation. So I hit up Ribble via their customer service chat on July 8th. Hey, what happens to the build date estimate if I were to switch my order from SRAM Force Access to Shimano Ultegra Di2? It seems things are readily available. Same day, I uh, it was a chat session, so um, the senior customer service advisor said, hey, uh, you could definitely change, but it wouldn't necessarily improve the expected delivery date because um, the component shortage is still something that they were dealing with. So from that moment on, 10 days passed, so on July 18th, I made up my mind, okay, so you know what? I like the new Ultegra Di2 12 speed bits uh, enough to a point where I'm willing, I want to change going from SRAM Force to Ultegra. So I hit up the customer service again and say, and luckily I ended up talking to the same senior customer service advisor. Um, and I basically confirmed, hey, let's go ahead, go through the exercise of changing my order, my bike build order to change the drivetrain from SRAM to Shimano. And basically I agreed to saying, okay, there could be a chance of a possible delay uh, by making this change. I was okay. And then what I did at the time was I offered, hey, how about if I buy the group set from Merlin and have it drop shipped your factory so that you could have access to the components that you don't have and build a bike. And then uh, kindly I was told that, hey, we, did, we can't accept third party packages. So that was okay. I'm still okay with the whole process because that was kind of a far-fetched, uh, but I was basically offering to see if, I, if there was a way for me to expedite the build process. Again, still I'm thinking component shortage that uh, they're being delayed with is the drivetrain bits because I'm thinking they have the frames and everything else all the rival parts in stock and that was uh you know my that was my assumption and that's uh 
you, know, you wouldn't be incorrect in saying, well, DC, you wouldn't, you shouldn't have assumed that uh, component shortage could have literally been anything. So the following day on the July 19th, the same uh, customer service advisor basically requested, hey, send us an email to make it official saying that you want to change from SRAM Force to Shimano and then go ahead specify the components. So this is where I replied an email with, okay, so for the crank set, I want to take 5034. For the cassette, I want to get 1134. My crank arm should be 170 mil. My rotors would uh, like to be 100 160 front and rear. So I sent that email back, um, basically agreeing, okay, let's go ahead and confirming that let's go ahead and swap the drivetrain. Then two days later, I got an email from their virtual mechanic. Um, he basically replied back saying, hey, Things that you've specified wouldn't work because your order is a SRAM force and the bits that you emailed us to go with are for Shimano ratio. So that kind of made me puzzle. Well, I sent that email because the senior advisor said I should send that email confirming my change from SRAM to Shimano so that I specify all these other uh, bits. So I'm thinking, well, do they not have, uh, you know, customer history uh, documentation, what we in technology field call the CRM, where, you know, information is uh, consolidated. So I kind of wondered why such misunderstanding would take place. So I replied back with an email saying, hey, that email was uh, written because of this reason. And these are the bits that I would like when the order gets switched to Shimano. So on July 27th, I replied back to the virtual mechanic who was oblivious to the previous conversations I had with his teammate, senior customer service advisor. So I replied back with this email that I show on the screen and I presented five different options. The first option was, yes, go ahead, let's swap the order from going from Force Stream Access to Shimano. Then the option two that I presented was, well, keep the order as a SRAM access if it uh, is gonna keep the order on track with the initial delivery date or have it be pulled ahead, then let's keep it as a SRAM access. So basically I'm just trying to make it so the bike could get built and get shipped to me. Third option that I presented was, again, still thinking they have all the ribble parts at least, um, I was uh, basically saying option three, send me just the frame and the cockpit and the wheels and then I'll source the component, uh, drivetrain components on my own and build it out. So option four was uh, basically, let's just cancel the order, refund me the money. Because remember, I paid for this in February. So now it's July. So I'm out of thousands of dollars here uh, and I have nothing to show for it. So uh, the fourth option I presented was that just to refund me the money, let's cancel the order. The fifth option would have been, um, hey, then I'll send you the components you're short of, thinking it's the drivetrain bits. And um, that would have been my offer, but uh, previously that was a shot down by uh, uh, their customer service advisor. So that, was, that offer was not made. So then all is well and later in that day on July 27th, I receive an email from the virtual mechanic. Hey, uh, so okay, we will confirm that you wish to go from SRAM Force to Shimano, but that will result in $1,100 upgrade fee. So I thought, so as soon as I received that, I'm thinking, Force and Ultegra, essentially they're the same thing. They're really not an upgrade. One, going from one to the other really isn't an upgrade. But set aside from that, uh, if you look at the pricing, they're not, they, they, they're not very different. So, I mean, I could understand a couple hundred dollars charge, you know, going either way, but $1,100, because I was offering, I did offer Ribble. Um, if it cost me a little extra to go from uh, Force, and Force to uh, Ultegra, I'd be happy to pay, because that was uh, disclosed even before this. But when it came back with $1,100 upcharge, I basically answered saying that $1,100 to go from Force to Ultegra is outlandish. Then the following day, the same mechanic answered the back saying, uh, hey, he, 
I made a mistake. It shouldn't cost $1,100. Uh, it's a lateral move without additional cost. I don't know why, but when uh, when the mechanic made the change within their system, the wheels got changed to Zip 303 Firecrest, and that's why the uh, the upcharge was showing on the system. I'm like, uh, should you do this for a living? Shouldn't you be checking these things? Um, but you know, at least uh, uh, the, the, the change of the components now isn't gonna cost me extra money. They confirmed uh, things would be okay going to Shimano. So again, we're at peace again at this time. All right, so fast forward a month or so. August 26th, I inquired with the customer service. Hey, since you're still building my bike, cause uh, you know, I'm checking my order status online and it's really not showing anything changing. So basically the bike hasn't been built. So I ask, hey, when and if you get to my bike, is it possible for me to request that you cut the steer tube right out of the factory for me? Cause they, at this time, they have a custom uh, headset cap, uh, which is unique to my order. And they have uh, my order sheet, which they've gone from uh, SRAM to Shimano. So it seemed to me like uh, they had a chance to do that kind of uh, thing if I uh, were to request. Again, my assumption, no big deal. I wasn't butthurt by this, but uh, so I made the request of uh, getting the steer tube cut because the front end is fully integrated with their own proprietary cockpit. And I just didn't want the hassle of getting that all removed and then cut and rebuild uh, the front end again. So of course it just involved the popping the bar back on but i didn't know how much slack i was going to receive the bike with in terms of cabling and everything so i made the request they said no we can't do that for you so you will get the bike with the standard 30 mil spacers so it it was a stretch i just sort of threw it and see if it's would stick and it didn't but that this is okay this is not a part of a negative experience that i'm uh, sharing with you so i accepted it and i moved on all right so now maybe a week or two have gone by i think it was right around the labor day weekend last year bike has zero movement on the order status and it's not being built and nothing is being done we are still waiting for the uh, components to arrive so at this point i'm pretty convinced that uh, bike isn't getting built anytime soon so i had um, reached out and said um, either send me your ribble bits uh, like the frame and the cockpit and I'll source the rest again So this is like a second or third time I'm saying just send me what you have and I'll build with the components that you don't have which I could get Probably because I'm still thinking it's the drivetrain bits So I made that request and then you know if not just cancel the order and give me my money back so I guess that's the second time that I actually mentioned the refund uh, and cancellation of an order and it triggered this particular uh, individual service rep that was dealing with me at the time. He said, well, no, no, hold on. I see your frame is being getting ready to be painted. So keep the order in place because it's about to be painted start so that it could get built up all right we finally have some movement so i was thinking okay let's well sure let's keep the order in place let's uh full straight ahead and um, that's what i was thinking then i don't have the exact date but it was mid september so this was uh, maybe a week or two after the whole hey your frame is getting painted it's getting ready to be built up so week or two after that um finally the online order status showed possible dispatch date was now moved up to November 4th. So this is now one week ahead of their original estimate date. So I'm thinking, okay, things are actually now moving because now there's even an update to my dispatch date. It got pulled up by one week. Everything is happy, we're good. So that's what I thought. Time had gone by. I checked November 3rd, which is one day before the dispatch date that was showing on the order status date it still said awaiting pick whatever that meant um nothing was happening now november 4th came online order status still showed awaiting 
pick. No sign of the bike being built or being shipped. So that's basically the same order status since late August because that's what it was showing, awaiting pick. And this is the same um, status that was showing when the rep was telling me, your frame is about to be painted to get built up soon. All right, so four days go by since from November 4th. So on November 8th, I decide to write an email to the CEO of Rivel basically mainly chronicling the events, including the erroneous price quote of $1,100 that I was gonna be charged to go from Force to Ultegra, which got resolved, but I thought he should know. And all the mis uh, mishaps along the way. And then there were two additional concerns that I voiced to the CEO in the very lengthy email that I wrote. One was that, hey, I have a problem that you held my money since February till now it's November. Um, we're one week away from the original estimated date. Now, Rivel never guaranteed that they would ship it mid-November. That was an estimate. So I do give them credit in that that was not a, something set in concrete. So um, that's not, I, I, I wasn't really holding them to the date, but um, I did have to go with something, uh, something tangible. So I kept referring back to the uh, estimated date that it I was given during the order process. So I was basically telling the CEO, look, You've had my money for nine months. I have nothing to show for it. And uh, this is uh, asinine. So I explained them everything that had happened up to that point. And then I said, I ordered a bike model year 2022. It's now almost 2023. I'm getting a one year old bike right out of the gate and I don't know how to feel about it. Second point that I also brought up in addition to him was that the color theme that the bike was ordered with was the Team Weld Tight, uh, Rebel Weld Tight Team um, paint job. But by November 8th, when I wrote this email to the CEO, the team had gone defunct. So now the color theme is uh, the team. Not that I bought the color theme because I, I was in love with that team or anything. I don't know anything about that team, but it just happened to be one of the better looking paint job options available. So I bought it. But since now the bike is gonna come with the team has, team has evaporated, now it's completely irrelevant. So I voiced those opinions, but mainly lack of development in the build process. Later that day, the CEO replied back to my email. It was rather short, um, straight to the point. Basically, he said that he checked with his workshop team and the bike and my bike shows that it would be built and shipped out by the end of the next week at that time. So this email was uh, written to me on November 8th. End of the next week would have meant November 18th. I accepted the email. I didn't even bother replying back because I sort of had a position, I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. So I sat back, sat around, waited for 11-18 to come, keeping an eye on the online order status. Future editing DC here. I forgot to measure it in the uh, main video, but right around this time, which was November 6, Ribble actually made this Instagram post, which I'll toss on the screen right now. And to that post, I left a comment. It was a somewhat snide remark, but I wasn't like a fully sarcastic or anything. I basically said, hey, what's the point of uh, making a marketing post for a bike that you have no ability to produce, that you can't sell, that you don't have any of? So it was along the lines of that. And then um, what they did was, I can't show you my comment because they removed my comment. So, um, I thought that was pretty funny. It kind of goes to show um, the, the the climate of that around that time. And uh, other comments by other uh, people you would uh, read on that particular post, how they were promised certain date and they keep getting uh, pushed back. So a lot of unhappy people, even on that one single Instagram post. Now let's go back to the video. November 18 came and gone and you would have guessed nothing happened despite 
the CEO emailing me that the bike would be built and shipped by that day, my bike did not ship. Order status is still showed awaiting pick. Now, this is when I realized Ribble has some internal problem. Think about it. I'm a, I own a couple different businesses. I consult too many different businesses in their technology endeavor. Any company, be, be tech, be manufacturing, be marketing, doesn't matter. Management has weekly meetings, monthly meetings, going over your projections, going over your forecasts, going over your internal issues, HR issues, what have you. There are meetings. If Ribble's CEO was able to talk to the team and see my bike was shipped by a certain day, but it failed, he has zero vision within his internal organization where he has insight into his own company. So his manufacturing schedule reports, manufacturing you know, update and whatever else, projections and everything, he's not getting correct information from his own organization. So he's now giving false information to his customer. All right, so that was November 18th. Fast forward two weeks. So on December 1, order status finally changed to, what did it say? Oh, order status changed to awaiting build and we estimate the build to be completed within seven days. Later that day on December 1, order status now changed to holded, whatever holded means. Held, yes, I get what that is. Holded? Is that even, whatever. Now on December 7th, order status changed to on hold. Our customer service representative will contact you. So I was thinking, what, why do you need to contact me? I mean, you have my address, you have my money, build a bike, ship it. But benefit of the doubt, I waited for someone to contact me, nothing happened. Next day, nothing happened. Next day, nobody contacted me. Following day, still says somebody would contact me. You get the drift. December 19th, finally order status changed, saying my bike was built and now shipping. All right, so that's the timeline. Now you may, th again, like I said in the beginning, you may think, well, it's not that big of a deal, DC. They were only late by a uh, month and a half in their delivery. That's not too bad. You may take that position and I, I'm, I, I would be okay with that. Um, and it was me assuming component shortage that, were, that they were mentioning was the um, external components, not their own components. So you could um, say, hey DC, that was your own wrongdoing. And I'm okay with that too. Throughout the process, I just felt like I wasn't happy with the way things went. Communication, and I, I showed my, my being irate and the responses that were given, especially the bit in August where I demanded a refund and the rep said, your frame is about to be painted, it's, um, it's about to be built. I, that was clearly, in hindsight, when you look at this timeline, that was clearly an effort to just let me keep the order in place. They, they, they weren't painting my frame. They, the frame wasn't being picked because that didn't happen until December. So that was a blatant dishonesty and the fact that Ribble's own CEO does not have it have you know correct insight into his own organization in terms of a manufacturing schedule and such so that uh, really um, left bad taste in my mouth now today i've shown you my bike i unboxed it it's pretty solid it has some questionable things there which i will go over more in the full in-depth review that i'm gonna do here's what i'm somewhat upset with i bought this bike at you know whatever the price ribble was charging at the time in february and now this exact the same build costs 700 dollars less so of, of course bike industry has changed um you know there we are no longer in the pandemic um super tight uh situation a lot of bike companies now have a surplus of 
parts because they overproduce. I don't know if a Ribble is one of those. So the bottom line is my bike for whatever the reason didn't get built and it just barely got to me. But at the same time, I could order this bike today and it would cost me $700 less right out of the gate and that bothers me. On the other side, today you cannot order that paint job. I have a bike that's wearing paint job that is no longer relevant or you know whatever. You may call it, hey, that's a limited edition DC. That's now a rare item. Eh, I don't know. So I, I'm a little upset about that too. And as mentioned earlier, I have a 2022 bike that I have begun to ride in 2023. So I'm not happy about that either. So in conclusion, I think the parts date they were short on wasn't necessarily the drive bits, whether SRAM or um, Shimano. What they didn't have is actually their own stuff, the frame and whatever else, maybe the cockpit. And so clearly and obviously, they produce their stuff probably far east, whether that's Taiwan um, or you know whatever and that factory didn't have capacity or raw material or whatever the issue was they couldn't produce the bits for ribble which is why they couldn't comply when i asked hey just send me the frame and whatever you have i'll build the rest so they couldn't do that either because they didn't have it so that's part of the whole uh shortage that they were dealing with in an unrelated matter, um, the customs fee to bring it in from United Kingdom to here, it cost me $800. So after all that, how do I feel about the bike? Stay tuned to this channel to find out more. Bike is actually mostly great to awesome with, again, as I mentioned earlier, has a couple odd bits and questionable handling, questionable build, which I'll go over in a full review later. All right, if you stuck around until this point, I thank you. You have a lot of patience and I uh, appreciate you sticking um, around through my endless, aimless rambling, as I always call it. Thank you. I've been Diabetic Cycling. You've been awesome. Keep the rubber side down and be safe out there. Until next time, you guys, be good humans. I'm out.